JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's a lightweight data interchange format. Now, to understand JSON, it's probably a good idea to look at JavaScript objects first. So we'll quickly have a look at an example and then start to dive more into what JSON is and what it's capable of and why you should use it. So let's take a look at the example of an a object. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it object or just obj. And I'm going to set this to a pair of curly brackets. Now this code we use to define an object in JavaScript and this is called an object literal. What we can then do is go ahead and extend it to contain properties which can hold values like strings, numbers, arrays and other objects. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this and I'm going to create a people property. This is going to be an array using an array literal and within this, this is going to store lots of different objects. So in this case, it's, I'm going to say name Alex and I'm going to say online true. So I've stored a string and a boolean value here. So I'll go ahead down here and create a, another object and I'll say name and this time Billy and then I'll say online and this time I'll say false. So I've now stored an object with a people property with an array with objects inside of that array obviously comma separated for each array value. So we can pass data around in a structure like this, JSON, to ensure that the data we're passing around is as lightweight and file size as possible. And also, the fact that JSON resembles JavaScript syntax, it means it's easier to work with in JavaScript-based applications. So it can also be used in non-JavaScript applications. So for example, you could output some JSON with PHP on the server side, and then read it in on the client side with JavaScript. Now let's actually take a look at placing this object into a JSON file that we might see expect to be returned from a server. So we're basically going to look at turning this object into, into valid JSON, but maintaining the same structure. So let's go ahead and open people.json and start to write this out. So I'm going to start with some curly braces and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create this people property. Notice that this time it is in quotes. So I'm now going to go ahead and assign an array to this. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing as we did within our JavaScript code. I'm going to add two arrays, name, Alex. Again, we use the property name with quotes and online true. Now we don't need to use quotes with this because that data type is supported in JSON. I'm going to create another pair of brackets and I'm going to say name Billy and again online but this time it will be a false value. So you can see it looks pretty much the same except we don't declare a variable. We don't need to end the file with a semicolon. We also need to have the property names as a string as I've already mentioned. So we've saved this as people.json with a JSON extension. And the reason we don't declare a variable here is because when we read this file in with JavaScript and we'll be looking at doing that Ajaxing this in later, the variable represented the loading in file, so however we load it in, represents the entire object. So if we go ahead and load a file in this file in using Ajax and call the data that's been returned data, we could access people via data.people and then subsequently the properties in each of these objects. So what we're now going to do is go on to look at what valid JSON is and how to determine valid JSON.